Nightmare Challenge rings anew for Ethan and his Suffolk crew. They've dodged a snake and charmed a maid, and with a gem, a guard they've paid. Their pact with Hordress holds the key to breaking in to level 3. Can Ethan find Medusa's eye? I'm sure he will. At least he'll try. For now, the team must think with care as Merlin tests their mental flair. So will they answer well? Let's learn, for time will tell, and time will turn. Is that definitely the right number, Rach? Yeah. Richard the First. Truth accepted. This deadly weapon isn't yours, it isn't hers or his, for it belongs to me, you see, and this is whose it is. What is it? Jeez, what is that supposed to mean? I'm not sure. Shall we ask him to repeat it? Yeah, good idea. Could you repeat that, please? Dear, oh dear, how excessively tiresome. Very well, then. This deadly weapon isn't yours, it isn't hers or his, for it belongs to me, you see, and this is whose it is. What is it? The weapon that belongs to him. He doesn't have a weapon. He's got a magic wand. That's kind of like a weapon, right? Think about Harry Potter. They're always saying they're unarmed when they don't have their wands. A deadly weapon? A magic wand? That doesn't sound right to me. Try to think less literally, team. He says the weapon belongs to him, but it doesn't have to be him. If I were asking the riddle, for example, the weapon would belong to me. That's more than enough from you, Pickle. Apologies, Master. Why are you all looking at me, team? We're trying to see what weapons you got. No, no, no. Think about the actual words of the riddle. Come now, Ethan. I must insist upon an answer, please. What shall I say? Shall I try want? I suppose we'll just have to go for it. Yeah, I think we should. Rach? Well, it's not the right answer, but I can't think what else it might be, so yeah. A want. Falsehood. Mine was the truth I sought. Oh no, we should have got that. I'm black and white, and people think I'm nothing more than just a stink. I'll spray you if you startle me. Then while you pong, away I'll flee. What am I? Hey, that must be a skunk! Yeah, I guess so. Do they really spray you? Sure, that's why you're not supposed to go near them. Haven't you ever had a skunk in your backyard? Sometimes they like to go through the trash. I've never seen one. In fact, I don't think they live in Britain. Say skunk, Ethan. Skunk. Truth. Accepted. Two is the score. You have avoided outright folly, and for that you have earned a small spell called Flip. Go forward with caution now, Ethan. You may no longer be a fool, but even the wisest man must sometimes pay dearly for a single moment of folly. Farewell then, and good luck. Well done, team. You seem to have impressed Merlin well enough, even though you didn't realise that the opposite of yours is mine. All right, Pickle, don't rub it in. Onwards then, team. Sidestep right, Ethan. Stop there and walk forward. Stop. Sidestep left a bit. And walk forward. Where am I? You're standing at the top of a flight of stairs in the corner of a large grey room, and there's a table in the middle of the room and a door on the left wall. There's some stuff on the table. Yes, this is the level two clue room team. There's much to be discovered here, no doubt. So, what's keeping you? Sidestep to your right, Ethan. Can you feel the banister? Yes. Come down the steps, then, and walk forward until you can see the table. Watch out, don't trip over your feet. Okay, I can see the table now. It's very high. It's almost taller than you, Chief. 
Can you tell what the objects are, Ethan? Yes, just about. There's a scroll, a bar of gold, a yellow necklace, a magnifying glass and a compass. You mean for drawing circles? No, for finding your way. A magnifying glass? Isn't that a spyglass, Master? I believe it is, Pickle. I never thought I'd see one of those in this clue room, I must say. Read the scroll, Ethan. Okay. It will lead you in the right direction if you let yourself get strung along. That's got to mean the compass, right? I don't know. Strung along might refer to necklace, might not it? Remember, team, information is power. That's why we read the scroll, isn't it? There's another potential source of information on that table, team. Shall I lift the spyglass? Yes, do that. But just who will we see on the other side, Master? I think we're about to find out, Pickle. You are beginning to try my patience, you third-rate seaman! The portal to our domain will appear on your ship when we see fit to open it, and not a moment sooner! Of course, dear lady. I merely wish to remind you that the cargo you ordered is ready and waiting in my hold. You presume to remind Queen Maldome, supreme ruler of the Maya world, of what she already knows full well. As I told you yesterday, my servants will be with you at my earliest convenience. Ah, yes, so you did. And er, the payment? Will be delivered in full as we agreed! Unless, of course, the quality of the merchandise does not meet our expectations, in which case we shall have to renegotiate the price. Madam, I assure you that the, ahem, goods are of the finest quality. I shall be the judge of that, Nemanor, and I shall also be the judge of whether our trade arrangement is to continue after this transaction. Most Supreme Majesty, I am hopeful that this will be the start of a long and prosperous business relationship between us. That remains to be seen, and I must warn you that should you allow any dungeon-dwelling interlopers, especially the ones they call Dungeoneers, to use the portal to sneak into the Maya world, I shall look upon you with extreme disfavour. My sheep carries no passengers, my lady, and the portal that once linked it to the realm of Nightmare has been closed for many years. I give you my personal guarantee that your security will not be compromised. Very well then. When I am ready, I shall open the portal and send my servant through to make the trade with you. Until then, stop wasting my precious time! Oh! The screen just got black! Put the spyglass down, Ethan. Yes, we can see you again. Well, Master, it looks like Maldemy has really stamped her authority on Marblehead. She's making full use of Lord Fear's inner chambers and his communication screen. All of which are Lord Fear's no longer, it seems, Pickle. As Hordris intimated earlier, I think Maldemay's overriding desire to be left alone is going to prove quite an obstacle to the quest from now on. As for Captain Nemanor, we'll just have to wait and see where his loyalties truly lie. Assuming, of course, that you can find your way onto his ship, team. I don't suppose there could be a Medusa eye inside any of those things on the table, could there? I don't think so, Ryan. What about that golden box? Maybe there's one in there. No, it's definitely a solid gold ingot, Brandy. Which object shall I take, then? I think we should take the compass, but I'm not sure about the other one. We should use the gold to buy stuff! I'm sure that strung along clue means that we're supposed to take the yellow necklace. You reckon, Rach? Master, isn't that necklace made of witch amber? Oh, Pickle, just when I thought you were beginning to learn when to keep your mouth shut. If the necklace has a special name, I think we'll definitely need it. I'll take that and a compass, shall I? Yes, I'm sure that's right. Yeah, it must be. Okay, I have them. On your way then, team. Turn 90 degrees to your right, Ethan. Walk forward. Slice it twice to your right. And walk forward. Where am I? You're in a blue room with a floor that's made up of purple squares, and the ceiling looks exactly like the floor. There are five windows really high up on the walls, but if the room is upside down, there could be doors. 
I suppose you could say the room is upside down then, couldn't you? Wait, does that mean I'm walking on the ceiling? I wouldn't waste time worrying about the physics of the situation, team. Take action now before your life force diminishes. Do we need to use the spell? Yes, I think so. Rach? Would it flip the room over, do you think? I bet it would. Okay then, spell casting. F L I P. Right. Well, that's made the back wall flip over. So now there are three doors in front of you, Ethan. I wonder why it didn't work on the other two windows. Never mind. At least we can leave now. Side step right, Ethan. And again. Goblins hunting in level two, master. Yes, and Ethan could well be the one they're hunting. You must hurry, team. Walk forward, Ethan. Keep going. Where am I? You're in a long corridor with lots of decorations along the walls. There are wooden panels and tapestries and things like that. It looks like it should be part of a stately home, and there's a large doorway in the left wall, and another one further along it in the right wall. Side step to your right, Ethan. Can you see something on the floor by your foot? Yes, it's a jam tart. Put it in your knapsack. Okay. Someone's just come through the door on your left, and they're running towards you. I think it's the witch. She's got a broomstick anyway. Hello there. Can you point me in the direction of Witchhaven then? Hey, hey, hey. Used to be here, it did. Hey, hey. But now there's no sign of it. Oh dear, master. It's that demented old crone Hecate. She won't have much luck if she's trying to find Witchhaven. Lord Fear destroyed it ages ago. Yes, Pickle, but I don't think that should be the focus of Ethan's exchange with the Wayward Witch. Far better to try and steer the conversation towards a more productive subject, team, don't you think? If she's a witch, maybe we're supposed to give her that witch Amber stuff. Oh yeah, Ethan, tell her you don't know where Witchhaven is, but you've got something she might like. I'm afraid I don't know where you can find Witchhaven, but I have something for you. Got something for me, have ya? Hey, 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 what you got for Hegarty then? Hey, hey. Wait a minute. Ask her what she's got for us first. What have you got for me? Oh, witches don't work like that, no. I've got to see what you're offering. What you got for Hegarty? Hey, hey. Tell her, Ethan. I've got this necklace made of witch amber. Oh, Hegarty likes witch amber, Hegarty does. What do you want in return then? Hey, hey. Something that will help me in my quest. What sort of thing? Magic, maybe. What sort of magic? Guys? Come on, team. What do you need? I don't suppose there's any chance she's got a Medusa eye. But I guess you might as well ask her, Ethan. Have you got a Medusa eye? Funny you should ask that. Hey, hey, I've been carrying a Medusa eye around with me for years. Hey, 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 I swapped it for a spell long ago. But I could never find any use for it. But I'll swap it for some witch chamber, I will. Wait a second. Ask her if it's in a suitable container, Ethan. Is it inside something solid? I don't want to be turned to stone. It is. It's in a small chest, isn't it? Hey, hey, here it is. Look. She's taking a box out of her cloak, and she's holding it out to you. Give her the witch amber, Ethan, and take the chest at the same time. Well done. E well, that's a fair trade we've just done, and no mistake. Now, I'm away to look for witch even somewhere else. It's obviously not here. Maybe I'll take a look on level one then. Hey, hey, perhaps it's there. See you later. Oh dear, Master. I don't think Hegarty will have any more luck trying to find Witchhaven on level 1 than she did on level 2, do you? I doubt it, Pickle. But then I suppose we can't know anything for certain with the dungeon in its current state. Should we call that wizard now? <coughs> the Goblins Return Team! I suggest you find some safer ground before you renew your acquaintance with Hordris. Walk forward, Ethan. Stop. Should we just take him through the left door? It's much closer. Oh no, they're here! Turn 90 degrees left, Ethan, and run forward. Where am I? You're in a cave with two stalactites hanging from the ceiling. We can see, like, the night sky through a big hole in the back of the cave, but I can't see a way out. There's no sign of goblins here, team. At least for the moment. Don't you think you'd better take full advantage of the situation? Call the wizard! 
Call Malefact three times, Ethan. Malefact. 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 Greetings, Ethan. I assume you have the object I asked for. Hand him the box, Ethan. Here it is. Thank you. Well now, let us waste no time and be on our way to level three. Ostium Revelanti. The door has opened in the wall on your right, Ethan, and we can see the deck of a ship beyond. Yes, that's the Cloud Walker, all right. Let's just hope that my friend Captain Nimanor is in an accommodative mood today. Come along, Ethan, this way. He's taking you by the shoulder, Ethan. Just let him guide you. Right. Okay, you're on the ship now. You're standing on the deck, and we can see a ladder leading up to the bridge. There's a man at the top of the ladder, and he's just drawn a Saracen-style sword. He looks like Sinbad the Sailor. You! Stowaways! What are you doing on my ship? Explain yourselves at once. Come now, Nimanor. Is that any way to greet an old friend? Ah, Otris. It has been quite some time since we last down the pint together. Yes, it was shortly before you got yourself trapped on this ship for all time, I seem to recall. My, but we got into some scrapes, didn't we? Do you remember that waitress in the Syrian port of Latakia who came after you with that vegetable peeler? I had to turn her earrings into vipers before she'd give up the chase. Yes, my friend, I do remember that waitress. And I also remember that you were the one who pinched her on the bottom while her back was turned. Oh, yes, so I did. Ah, uh, good times. Yes, good times. So, what brings you to my ship? A simple desire to use your portal to travel to the Maya world. That is all. Or, my friend? Do you know what Maldame would do to me if she found that I had let anyone use that portal to sneak into her kingdom? Really, Nimanor? Surely our long-standing friendship should take precedence over such a small matter as that. Very well then, Otris. You and I have been through a great deal together, and I cannot refuse you. But as for your helmeted companion, then... Ethan is with me. I can vouch for it. No, that is not enough. I recognize a dungeoneer when I see one, and I have been told to take special care to stop dungeoneers from using that portal. If I am to take so great a risk, your young friend must give me something to make it worth my while. If not, he goes overboard to sharks. Well, Ethan? Do you have anything to offer the good captain? We'll have to try the compass, I suppose. Would you like this compass? Hmm? What use is a compass on a ship that is cursed never to find land? Come now, Nimanor. Surely you still need to navigate through storms and such like? Well, yes, that is true. And I haven't had a decent compass for years. I must admit. Alright then. I will accept it. Put it by the bucket if you would. So I step left, Ethan. Can you see the bucket? Yeah. Put down the compass next to it. Then. Well, my friend, if you would be so kind as to inform us when the portal opens up. It is already there, right at the back of the hole. I am expecting Maldame's servants to arrive at any moment. Hmm. Then perhaps we had better make ourselves scarce sooner rather than later, if that's all right with you, Nimanor. Be my guest. Come along, Ethan. Let's go. Hordris is taking you by the shoulder again, Ethan, and he's pushing you forward. Go with him. You're walking through a dark room now? It looks like you're going towards an open chest. That's a hatch, I think. That's right, Ethan. Just step down there if you would. I'll be right behind you. Where are we? You're in a large grey room with shield-shaped holes in the walls and a wooden table on your right. Ah, this is most satisfactory. We have arrived in the Tower of Lingholm, Ethan. 
I know that you have business here, and that it is none of mine. So now is the time for us to part. Look out for Maldome, won't you? I feel sure she'll be looking out for you. Good luck. Thanks, Hordris. The wizard's walking off. Well done, team. You've made it to level three. Time to equip even for survival, don't you think? Turn right slightly, Ethan. Good. And walk forward. Can you see the table? Yes. What objects are there? Well, there's a fish which I'm putting in the knapsack. Uh, there we go. There's also a scroll, an hourglass, a long needle, a horn and a bottle that says invisibility on it. Who's in blades is gonna be able to sew with that needle? Only a giant could use it. Read the scroll, Ethan. Welcome to Linghorn. The cup is in Marblehead. Be quick and be quiet. Uh, does that help us? I don't see how it relates to the objects. Be quiet could mean we shouldn't take the horn. And maybe be quick means that we should take the timer. The needle is unusual, isn't it? Maybe we'll need that. What about the potion? Oh, no, I guess being invisible wouldn't actually make us quicker, would it? Or quieter, for that matter. And with the needle? I don't know. I just think it wouldn't be there, unless there was some point to it. No pun intended, Ethan. I guess it could be useful if we need a giant with holes in his socks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ethan, take the needle in the hourglass, then. Well, now that you've made your choice, team, you'd best be on your way. Side step left, Ethan. Keep going. Stop there. And walk forward. Where am I? You're in a green corridor with burning torches on the walls. There are four green fishmen with tridents walking around in front of you. My men, Master! How can Ethan get past them? Well, I'm not entirely sure that he can, Pickle. My men may have very poor eyesight, but no one could sneak past four of them at such close range without becoming invisible. Jeez, oh, we needed a potion. Try turning over the hourglass, Ethan. They're coming towards him. Oh, yeah. Oh no, Master. Oh dear. What a shame, team, that you didn't think it might be more useful to give Ethan the means to become invisible than to equip yourselves to placate a giant with holes in his socks. But Master, that was just a joke. A joke that has cost Ethan dearly, it seems. So now there's only one thing left to do. Spellcasting. D-I-S. M I S S. Farewell then, Ethan, Rachel, Brandy, and Ryan. You travelled far in the dungeon, and now you must travel even further on your way back to Framlingham. The dungeon salutes you, yet it also yearns to meet its next victim, so enter. Stranger. Welcome, young lady. Your name, please? Megan Murphy. Well, Megan, you'd better call your advisors to us quickly. Katie, Chris, Mike. Welcome. Who guides this dungeoneer? Katie King. Chris Griffin. Mike Green. And where do you all come from, Megan? Kingston-upon-Thames. Very well, your challenge is accepted. Pickle the equipment, if you please. Here, Master. Thank you. Megan, here is the Helmet of Justice, which blinds you to the way ahead. Here the knapsack for food to feed your life force. Two objects may you carry at any one time, and remember, the only way is onwards. There is no turning back. Now, are you ready? Yes. Then face the dungeon door and step boldly forward. 
Where am I? You're in a dark, narrow corridor, so just keep walking forwards. This is a dwarf tunnel, team. It's not a very safe place to linger, Megan, so I suggest you keep moving. Shall I take this turning? Yes, you might as well. Okay, there's another turning coming up on your right. Ah, we can see an exit up ahead of you, Megan. Just keep walking forward. That's it. Okay, you've stepped out into a brightly coloured castle courtyard. There's a jester, and he's looking at something near his feet. I can't see what it is. That's enough smart remarks from you, Motley. Now, are you going to help me or not? Because if you plan on standing there staring down my dress all day, I'm off. Hang about, Stella. You can't go off on your own in the state you're in. Anything could happen. I mean, what would you do if you ran into Citrus's cat? I'd stick a knife in it, that's what. Right, Megan? The thing that Jess is looking at is actually a woman. And she's really tiny. Maybe you better ask if you can help them. Okay. Um, excuse me. Hey, old Belmet Ed. Look here, Stella. It's a Dungeoneer. Oh, is it? Hello, Dungeoneer. Look, I don't mean to be rude, but unless you've got some magic to get me out of this fix, then I just haven't got time for you. Oh, come on. We can afford to be friendly. Good manners cost nothing, as me old mum used to say. What's your name, then? Megan. Well, Megan, as you might have picked up, my name is Motley, and hers is Stiletta. I bet you're wondering how she got to be so small, aren't you? Um, yes. Well, lovely as she is, Stiletta's a bit of a thief. And back when Lord Fear was in charge down at level 3, she pretty much had the run of the place. Motley, you are not to go blurting out this story to everyone you see. Unless you want me to tell everyone why you were once shrunk to the size of a mouse. Yes, well, to cut a long story short, now that the old Iron Maiden's got her mitts on Fear's old place, she set up a whole load of new security measures. So when Celeta goes trying to nab some of her bits and pieces, well, you can work the rest out for yourself. Should we offer to help? Of course. I bet we can find some magic to get her back to normal. Megan, ask them if you can help. Okay, is there anything I can do to help? Now there's an idea. What do you reckon, Stiletta? Megan here could probably snag you a bit of magic somewhere on her route through this level. Oh, I say, that is a thought. Would you do that for me, Megan? Say yes, Megan. Hang on. Ask her what we'll get in return. If I do that for you, will you help me with my quest? Well, I'll certainly try. I can be jolly useful when I'm at my normal size. Shall I agree, guys? Yes. All right, I'll help you. Gosh, thanks a million, Megan. Now all I need is a spell to change me back. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just an undo or restore spell would be absolutely spiffing. Okay. After you've found the spell, you'd better call us. Tell you what, Stiletta. If you get in my little pouch here and Megan calls me, you'll be transported too. Oh, yuck. I'm not getting in that thing. Oh, come on. What do you think's going to happen to you? I won't accidentally use me in my juggling act, I promise. And I won't do it on purpose, either. So, have we got a deal, Megan? You find the spell and then call my name three times. Got that? Ah, uh, there it goes again. No more from Megan for now, it seems. Passive ones, join us again soon for Nightmare. It's well worth waiting for. Thank you.